So today we are here to talk about the title model. I'd like to introduce Phil Barker, Poppy Buchanan Barker, and Jacqueline Rixe. And um, yeah, since a few years we have that German book of the Gezeiten model, we call it in German. And um, yeah, maybe you could shortly explain what the title model is. Okay. Well, maybe we should begin by saying why, why the title model. Um, and we chose the title model because it was to be about change. And for us, change is something which happens um, when we're not really aware of it. One moment, you know, life is like this, and then later we realize that it's different. Some change has happened. And for us, that was a bit like standing on the seashore and the water comes in from the sea and it almost reaches our feet and then it goes back out again. And then it comes in again and it goes back out again. And if we stood there for maybe five, ten minutes, eventually the water would come in and it would be over our, over our feet, up around our ankles, and eventually we would be completely enveloped. But at no point would we really be aware that the sea that was out there is now here. And so we thought that was a good metaphor for how change happens uh, in our own lives. Things happen very gradually. Things appear to be changing and then they go back. Then they change a bit again and then they go back. But eventually at some point the movement is entirely forward and we've gone from there to here. So we thought we should call this way of working title because a lot of what we do in life is like taking one step forward and then, another, and then stepping back and then we take another step forward and then we step back but eventually we end up going from here to there very like the waves on the beach. Yes. Yeah, and I think too we've always lived near water. Um, water's always been an important feature in our life, and so we thought that metaphor of water was really important because when we've worked with people, and we'll talk about that later on, um, people often tell us they're drowning in distress. It's something that people use as a metaphor, um, certainly in the UK, and or they're boarded by pirates when things have happened to them. They feel they've lost so much. Mm -hmm. So that was another reason that we thought water would be a good metaphor for a, a new model. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is it? What is it? Um, well, it's a, it's a practical philosophy. That sounds kind of grand, but it's, we have a philosophy that we'll talk about in a moment, um, uh, which identifies all the things which we are, which you think are important in terms of working with this uh, way of helping change to happen. And this, ph this philosophy is uh, a way of thinking uh, about how we might be able to help people um, to move on in their lives, uh, make discoveries about themselves as, as movement starts to develop, you know, within them. Um, and that way of working, we will talk about some of the particular ways that we use, you know, to try and help people. But at its heart lies a set of values um, about what is important uh, if one is to offer genuine help to another person. Um. So there are some commitments in your model as well, which you mentioned and which you described. Could you maybe roughly describe that mm -hmm. for us as well? When we started using the title model, um, people started asking us, how will we know that we are working in the way you're talking about? So we thought long and hard, what should we do? What should we put in the model? And we decided on the Ten Commitments. We called them the Ten Commitments. Um, 
And it's really a list of things that people can look at and read and understand, um, which would help them to say, yes, I'm working in this way. Um, I think now the Ten commit the Commitments are very well known around the world, um, in the tidal world anyway. Um, and people have used just the Ten Commitments to do work with, which is quite quite a nice thing to happen. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think we will say something shortly about some of the, the practical ways that we try and work with people. But they all come from the, the commitments. Mm -hmm. And the important thing, as Poppy said, is that uh, the, com the commitments are the starting point. Uh, and there's all sorts of other things that one might do you know, with another person or with a group of people that might be different from the, the specific methods that we have developed. But if they reflected the values of the commitments, then one could say that you, know, you were working in a tidal way. Mm -hmm. um, and so we think the commitments might serve as a way for people to, to grow and help them the, this way of working develop um, by, by developing new ideas about how to you know, work with people based on you know, some of those uh, ten commitments. Could you give an example of a commitment? Yeah. What's your favourite then? I think, I think my favourite out of, them, out of the ten is the last one. And it's... Um, it's... <laughs> be, tran <laughs> be transparent. Be transparent. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's... For me, that's a very important one because people have told us um, when, when they're taken into care or when they go into care that they often are written about all the things in the notes are written about by the professional. Mm -hmm. And in the, the, the value base of the model, we like to be transparent. That's what the model is all about, be very transparent. And all the paperwork is done with the person, alongside the person. And the person has a copy of the paperwork mm -hmm. as well as the, the worker. And we start off by offering the person the pen so that they can write the answers themselves. Um, which, some people are doing that now anyway, but that was a very new thing when we started the title model. And when we went back and asked people what they thought about being offered the pen, they liked it because it was powerful. Because the pen can be used as a weapon, and we do say that in the model. So, I think that's my favourite. Yeah. Okay. Go back to the being transparent. Yeah. In addition to um, the giving of the pen and the inviting the person you know, to, to participate actively in, in writing the record of what has been talked about, um, you know, we realise now people are doing other things, that uh, people are asking people, would it be okay to do this? Or, uh, I would like to do that, is that okay with you? And so uh, every, instead of people making decisions, you know, professionals making decisions on behalf of the person and then telling them. Uh, it has become more open and transparent. And uh, in, um, in, I guess, in the, uh, the sailing world, this you would be saying everything is above board mm -hmm. and uh, <coughs> visible. So I think, yeah, that, that's a very good one. I, I think um, one of my other, what would my other favourite be? Uh, maybe... Um, Learn a language. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about um, um, you know, giving people an opportunity to, to speak. Um, and it is important that we, we learn their language so that we listen very carefully to what people are saying. And if people say things that we do not fully understand, it's very important that we say, would you like to tell me a little bit more about what you just said there? And we, we need to pick up exactly what the words that they use and the way that they use them so that when we, when we use those words back to them, we're speaking in the same kind of way that they are speaking. And that would be respectful. Um, I think often what happens in traditional uh, psychiatric practice is people say something like, um, today I'm feeling very blue. 
and the professional will say, ah, so you're a bit depressed. Um, they have translated this into a different word, which is meaningful to the professional, but it's not what the person said in the beginning. So I think we would say, ah, you're feeling blue. Would you like to tell me more about what that is like for you? And the person will realize that we aren't just listening, but we are hearing. And so we don't talk so much about um, listening to people. We talk about trying to give them a good hearing. Mm -hmm. So um, if there are a lot of nurses who find it very useful, but they don't know how to implement a model like this, do you have some hints how to start with implementation in different settings? Or in Where city? should they begin? How should they begin? This is a question. It's a good question because it's a question that we're always asked when we do workshops. How do you implement the model? How do we begin? And I guess for us there's any number of ways that you could begin. I suppose it's the same as implementing any new change into a service. Um, the first thing I would say would be creative. <laughs> Nurses have to be creative if they're trying something new. And that goes for anybody trying something new. Um, I think um, some places have started off very small. They may just take one nurse and one person in care and work with them um, with the model, maybe with the paperwork. Um, other places have started off with the group work and started doing the discovery group. Um, I think it very much, we, we never ever say how people should implement it. We leave that up to the services. And I think that's one of the reasons why the title model has become popular because we think every service is different um, and we can't possibly know what fits that service. Mm -hmm. um, so we have kind of left up to them and often they will write to us and say, How, what do you think of this and why, why we are doing it this way? And we say, great, you know. Um, so every service tends to be different. Yeah, um, yeah I, think, um, I think we have a good idea about what would be the best way to do it. And that would be to try and uh, launch a huge ship at one go, if you have no experience of doing this. And so we don't know anybody, uh, for example, who has uh, tried to introduce the title model across a whole hospital um, in one go. It, is usually, it has usually been exactly the way that Poppy has described. People usually start with very small, um, it's like dipping your toe in the water, um, very small projects um, or experiments that then, once they gain more confidence, that then starts to grow. And, and I, I think that within the metaphor of the model, that is uh, the best way to go about it, because it is like a, a kind of drip effect, that uh, from very, very small drips, you know, large pools of water, and then ultimately oceans will develop. And I think that uh, maybe if people begin as Poppy said with these small, you know, maybe one person at a time or one nurse at a time and then gradually another one is added, another one is added, then the thing will have a, a more organic kind of growth. And most importantly, people will gain experience in that. Uh, whereas if they were trying to do something, you know, launch the big ship in one go, uh, it could be extremely stressful and there's always a great fear that the whole thing will sink. Um, so I think that, that that's probably the, that's what we have learned. Mm -hmm. And if we were asked for one piece of advice, that would be it. Start small and grow it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any research done about your model? Well, a lot of people have done, yeah, a lot of people have done. We, we did research in the early days right at the very beginning, because the, what is now known as the title pod, uh, model uh, grew out of a research project that we oversaw at, at uh, Newcastle um, in the late 1990s, well, mid to late 1990s. 
And that, that research um, looked at um, what, what kind of impact uh, did working in this way appear to have? What, what differences did it appear to make in the sort of um, statistics that were collected um, to, to describe how, how healthy, if you like, uh, a service was? And, and from that research, um, we learned a whole lot of things that, um, you know, people, there was much less uh, expressions of sort of anger and violence and aggression, you know, from people when they were in a, a, a distressed state. Um, you know, uh, there was uh, less need for, for staff to, to use uh, kind of um, restraining um, you know, ways of working to kind of try and contain people. Um, the people themselves, people who were called the patients, uh, were much happier with this way of working than they were with the old way. And, and uh, most importantly, uh, I think the staff themselves were, were happier with that. But and lots of other people have done, around the world, have done other uh, researches that are similar or related to that, looking at what happens um, within a, a, a service, maybe an individual ward or in a, a community uh, uh, home, uh, what happens when you work in this way um, rather than in the, the way you did previously. Um, but I think we'd have to say when we no longer feel that research is that important. Mm -hmm. I know that people think research is important in terms of pointing the way forward, but um, we believe that we should be asking every individual person um, what happened for you when somebody's worked this way. Mm -hmm. Because every individual person is unique. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happens for them um, will be different from what happens to the person next to them. And I think most importantly, what, the, what will have been done mm -hmm. in the name of title will vary. From one person to the next. Yeah. Would you agree? I would agree with yeah. that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, thank you very much. Hope you come back soon. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> in, that was the second workshop in 2016. And um, yeah, we invite you again, and then whole Germany will be <laughs> floating <I'll watch. laughs> with the title model. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. In addition to you know the paperwork, um, there is no. <laughs> <laughs> so we are. We can edit it. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.